how to use JavaScript to modify the document. So now that you know how to use JavaScript, the language, uh, we're going to show talk about how you're going to use JavaScript and what are the methods that JavaScript in the browser gives you for modifying the HTML document. All right, so here's a little simple HTML document. We can open up Chrome tools and uh, look at it, right? It's got uh, not much as the head, the body. And it's loading up that script tag, but you can see that script uh, has done nothing. Here's the actual document. So mostly I'm going to go back here to the console just to show you uh, here dynamically how you modify the document. So uh, basically what happens is the moment your browser downloads this HTML file, it creates this, right? And uh, so it parses the whole document and creates a document object model or the DOM. And uh, this is like a representation of it. You see, it's, it's a tree and um, you can open and close parts of it. So when you're writing JavaScript, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be creating new elements, right? Subtrees uh, in this tree or modifying existing elements. So you're going to create new elements and add them to the tree or modify existing ones. How do you do that? Well, uh, first of all, there is a global variable in every JavaScript window called the document, right? That is that holds the DOM, the document object model for this page, right? And you can see document, you know, I'm showing this is the document and I can go through it. Um, then the document also has a bunch of methods that it provides. So it's one of the important ones start with get, right? So the first thing we want to do is uh, I want to get a part of that document because I don't need the whole document. I just want to get uh, part of that document and uh, I can do that using any one of these. So get element by ID will give me an element given its ID attribute uh, by class name given its class name and uh, by name given its name and by tag name given its tag name. So let's go with that one. Uh, just to try that out, and you see there's one h1 element there, so I'm going to go do that, and there you go. I got I actually got an array with one thing in it, uh, which is the h1 element, right? So to actually, and I can put that in a variable, so I can say h equals, and then I get the zero of the element, so now that is uh, that guy. Okay, so, and I can then modify h, once I have h, I can modify it, and so some of the big ones are the inner text property. Inner text uh, that contains the text. So that's the inner text of the H1 element. So if I just say H dot inner text equals dynamic web page, boom. So the moment I change that, it changes, right? So the browser, at the moment I change an element in the DOM, the browser knows about it and reflows, relay out the whole page. So that can take a little bit of while depending on how complicated your page is. So you want to be careful about how many things you change on the page. But that's it, right? So that is easy. You can just change a text like that. Uh, you know, any time I want to change it, I can do that. Um, okay, so the other one is h um, dot inner. We saw that inner HTML. In this case, it doesn't have any because the h1 tag, you know, is just that. It doesn't have any sub elements in it. Okay, so if there did, it would have returned those. Okay, so let's now let's say we want to add something. So I'm gonna go back and say p is document dot get element by tag name, and uh, I'm gonna say p, right? And uh, actually, that's not quite what I wanted. I wanted p zero, right? Because that's gonna give me an array. So now that p is that this paragraph, which is here, you know, invisible, right? Remember, there's an h1, and then there's a p tag under there that has nothing in it, so it doesn't do much. But it is there, so I can, uh, you know, I can do as I did before. Let me just do that inner tags, 
I go some text and then that's gonna appear right there. I can also create a new element. Let's say I want to create a hyperlink. A equals uh, document dot create element. So we just hold this create method. Um, an important one is create element that allows me to create an element and I just give it the tag name that I want, right? So A is now hold that HTML element, and then A dot inner text um, is gonna be link. Uh, click me. Okay, so now look at A, and there it is, an A dot href is gonna be, you know, whatever. Um, to my website, so there you go. Now I wanna put this in this P, which I have here. So I can say P dot append child A, and there it appears. So when you append, when you have a P, when you append something, it's gonna add it you know, within it. So let's go back over here, now you can see here's the P, here's some text, and here's the A. You notice I didn't put a space, after the sum text and now uh, and there's no space there, you know, it looks kind of ugly. But that, that's how it works. So append element, I can append an element to any element pretty easily. Okay, um, now let's go back over here. So to the main page. So uh, like I said, you can do this with IDs. When you're doing JavaScript, most of the time, uh, this is how you're going to be doing it. You're going to have certain areas that you want to change. Um, let's say this is uh, the message area. Uh, and uh, you're going you're gonna to give them IDs. So you're going to have certain divs. Uh, it's usually the way it goes. Uh, and give each div a particular ID. And then go back to here, reload. So now we have those two here, right? We have a P with an ID and a div with content. And uh, and then I can say, you know, uh, content is document dot get element by ID. Content. And uh, now I have it. And so that's an easy way because I give them a particular ID I know exactly what I'm getting. So now I can say content dot inner text and it's gonna be this is the content. And I can put stuff in there. And if I don't like it, then you know I can get rid of it later on, all that dynamically. So um, that is the basics of how you do uh, dynamic pages. We're gonna you know we're gonna be using jQuery and gonna have some lectures on using jQuery, which simplifies some of this. You don't have to type so much and you know, it gives you more power, but it's always good to do these things by hand. Um, now, one last thing that I wanted to mention is about uh, bookmarklets. I'd say maybe you've heard about bookmarklets. So what is a bookmarklet? Well, it's just, you can type up here Java script colon one plus five. And, um, oh, wait, well, this is going to go away. Let me do JavaScript colon alert. And uh, you see it pops up with a little hi. Right? So basically, you can have a link, uh, a URL that starts, instead of starting with HTTP, it starts with the word JavaScript, colon, and then uh, some JavaScript. Right? And that JavaScript will get executed. Hello. Mm, so that's a function, so I have to actually execute it. Uh, oh, that didn't work, but whatever.
So let me uh, show you a little way of doing this. So here we have this div with an ID of content. So what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to go get the, let's say C is my content, right? And then I'm going to create a link which is with the old document dot document dot create element that we saw before and uh it's going to be an a right and uh a link dot inner text is going to be clip me gotta match those uh, and then uh, awesome and so that's a I'm sorry link as my link but now I'm gonna put an h ref and that h ref is going to say JavaScript colon alert here I am uh, I think that's fine and then let's see dot append child link I'm gonna add that link to my content and here it is so here's the link and you can see right there is showing me that if I click on it, it's going to run JavaScript alert. Here I am. And sure enough, I click on it and it runs that JavaScript. But this is a link, right? So I can just bookmark it. I can just go right click and uh, where it is. Uh, well, it's not here. It's up, you can't see it. Uh, but I can uh, bookmark it up here. And, uh, and if I bookmark it, what's going to happen is it's going to become a bookmark. Just like all the other bookmarks I have on all my bookmarks. And not only that, but every time then I go to that bookmark, it's going to run this JavaScript. What's really important is that it's going to run that JavaScript on the page that I'm in. So I don't have to be on this page. I could be at google.com. And, and when I go to the bookmark, click on that bookmark, it's going to run that JavaScript. So it's going to go run. The JavaScript on my current page, which could be, you know, my bank account, 